and hello again and here we are back on my drive with my Kawasaki Z650B project as you can see I've now got the bodywork back on the bike and a new seat but it is lacking quite a lot of things in particular the wheels so the wheels have been rebuilt with new spokes and new aluminium rims and I've just taken them to my local tyre place to get some new tyres and inner tubes fitted and they'll be back here in two or three days time so this week then I intend to get the bike back in its wheels at last once that's done I can do a lot more work on the bike I can fit the rear brake and so on sort out uh, some brake lines that sort of thing so yeah it's uh, going to be quite a busy week but in the meantime, in the meantime, I've still got an awful lot to do. And my main priority this week is to get the electrics working. I want to refit the original wiring loom to the bike with a few changes. It needs a bit of work, a few repairs here and there. And I've got to make some changes because obviously I've changed the bike slightly. In particular for the rear brake, that's different. And also the switch gear is different on the handlebars. I've actually got a choice of three different uh, switch gears to fit on the bike. I'm not sure which one to use yet, but I'll work it out. I'll work it out. There's also things like fitting the rear indicators and even the front indicators. I'm going to make a change because the stems are all rusty, so I've got some brand new ones to fit in the meantime. So, yeah, it's going to be quite a busy week. I must say, I don't look forward to working on electrics, but it's going to be done. It's going to be done. So, where do we start? Where do we start? Well, I think I'll start with something easy. I'll fit some new handlebars to the bike and those new indicator stems and the rear indicators and anything I can find that's pretty straightforward so let's get started and there's the two front indicator stems changed over right so now I'm going to do the same thing but this time for the rear indicators and so now I fitted the stems to the rear of the bike but I'm not going to fit these indicators because they've seen better days this one in particular it's got a cracked lens, it's been grazed, it's quite rusty, and it should have two wires coming out of it, so they got one, so that's no good. And its brother here, the other one, a bit better, but it's still fairly corroded here and there, so if they won't go on the bike, I'll have to uh, buy a new pair of indicators for the rear of the bike. And so now I've got the original clutch lever fitted to the handlebars, along with the new, or second hand, master cylinder for the front brake, which came off a Ducati 600SS. This also has a, a cable here, which is part of the original bikes, the original Ducati. This is for the, uh, the front brakes light switch, which I think I'll keep because it'll replace a rather heavy and complicated system that the original bike used. On this side, I've got another cable with a rather battered cover. It's all broken, but this is part of the safety system. It's a switch which stops you from starting the bike if the clutch isn't pulled in. So I think I'll keep that. But having said that, on this side, I suspect that um, this cable is going to be far too short to go where it needs to go. So I'll have to modify that. You may also notice that this has a bare aluminium lever, whereas this is coated black, which isn't ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, strip off the coating of black and just polish it and leave it bare aluminium. I'll do the same thing with this one because although it's already bare aluminium, it's sort of seen better days. It's got a few dents and scratches on it. So I'm going to take it off, rub it all down and polish it so they both look pretty much the same. So there's another job for this week. So yeah, we are getting somewhere. Very slow progress, but progress nevertheless. And so now I want to fit the calves back on the bike. But before I do so, I just want to look inside the uh, float balls and see what state they're in. So here's the first one coming off. Yeah, that looks okay actually. Let's have a look. Let's not lose any of the screws. And actually, it's not looking too bad at all. Bit of muck in the base of the float ball, which you can expect. I can clean that out. But the calves themselves, and this uh, area here, looks pretty damn good. Now, I reckon this bike hasn't been run for many years. And therefore, it's not been run on ethanol-based fuels like E8, sorry, E5 or E10. Because if you let E10 dry in your carbs it can leave a right mess behind it's sort of green gunge everywhere so we've not had that problem bit of muck in the bottom of the float ball that's to be expected nothing too bad at all so i'm pretty pleased with that now when i tried to start the bike when i first got it i did put fuel through these carbs and the good news is they didn't leak so we know the, the floats are working okay and so yeah i think what i'm going to do is take a risk clean out the float balls and put this back on the bike as is so I'm just gonna put that back on there for now and then I'll take off all the carbs 
quickly round me around. All these float balls, in turn, check them out, clean out the float balls, and then get these carbs back on the bike. Right, so here is the wearing loom, and it's obviously seen better days. A lot of it's been wrapped in insulation tape, which was, isn't ideal. It's all becoming unwrapped. See here, it's all unwrapped, here as well, and so on. And there's a big gap there for some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it all up. Got me WD-40 here and a rag. Once I've done that, I'm going to unwrap everything I can, all this insulation tape that shouldn't be here. And I'm going to rewrap the loom with the correct loom tape. And to do that, I bought this stuff. This is 20 metres of uh, so-called harness tape. Bought it from eBay. Wasn't that expensive, about, I don't know, seven or 10 pounds, something like that. So I'm gonna rewrap it, and as I do so, I'm gonna check everything I can. Make sure all the circuits are still okay. Make sure I've got no loose connectors anywhere, or no braided wires or braided wires where there's a bit of bare wire where it shouldn't be. And once I've done that, I can start to think about fitting it back on the bike. The original switch gear was knackered, broken, so you can't buy new. I did have some switch gear off my F2 model, but guess what? It's different, it's all different. Different wires, different switches. So, oh, blum, blum, neck. So I've actually bought some aftermarket switch gear that I've used before. So that's all now on the bike, ready to go. So next then I've got to spend a really boring afternoon unwinding all this stuff and rewrapping it and as I say checking it as we go on. I've also got to make a few more changes because obviously at the back for the rear brake light I've got a different brake light. I've got a brake light off a Kawasaki ZR7S. So the this bit here is all different. So I'm going to have to uh, change all that, cut off a multi-pin connector and change it to whatever I've got on on the ZR7S, which I've already done actually, I've already fitted some uh, little bullet connectors that I like using, so that's fine. The good news is, the good news is that an old bike like mine, from 1978, has far less wiring than a modern bike. I imagine if I took the wiring harness off a, a modern Kawasaki, it would be three or four times as complicated as this. This is not too bad at all. And most of actually this, this here, this front end here, <laughs> All this goes inside the headlamp bucket, so a bit of a squeeze, get everything in place. Um, this, as I say, goes underneath the tank and at the front of the tank, and the wires go from the uh, the uh, handlebar switches into there. I think that's the safety cutout for the clutch. Uh, that, I don't know. I think that might be charging. Down here, you've got all the wires that go to the centre of the bike, where you've got things like the... Um, the rectifier and the indicator flasher that sort of thing and then of course at the back here we've got the indicator wires and the rear brake set up so yeah, it's pretty simple really looks a bit complicated at first when you first just grab it and think oh my god what the hell am i going to do with that if you spread it all out it's not too bad yeah so there are some problems uh, but it's just a question of slowly working your way through them i've already worked out how to change over the switch gear so that's fine and the new switch gear is now on the handlebars and here are the switches on the handlebars now the good news is i've used these switches before so i knew what the wires do which come out of them and that's a good thing because it doesn't tell you in the packaging that you get with these switches so once i've worked that out i've changed all the connectors on the end of these wires to bullet connectors which match the wiring on the main loom so in theory in theory if i've worked out the colors correctly i should be able to plug the straight into the loom and it should work first time but something tells me it's never that easy but we'll see when i get to that point and now i've got the avon tires fitted to the uh, wheels and it wasn't cheap I mean, these tyres and inner tubes were £285 fitted, which is quite a lot. And actually far more than you pay for modern 17-inch wheels, but there you go. So before I try and fit the wheels back on the bike, I've still got a bit more work to do. And that job is to clean up this brake plate. It's got a few scratches in it, a few gouges, a bit of corrosion. So I've got to spend a bit of time rubbing it down and polishing it to get it to a decent state before it can go back on the bike. Almost there now. There we go. A few 
Phew, well that was quite difficult, but got there in the end. So rather than fit this old rusty castle nut that came off the bike, I've got a brand new one in stainless steel. And of course that matches the stainless steel fasteners on the bike and the stainless steel adjusters and the stainless steel spacer behind it and so on and so on. So hopefully this will keep on looking good for many years in the future. Anyway, with that done, let's now move on and do the front wheel. Phew. Well at last we got the bike back in its rebuilt wheels and I must say it wasn't quite as difficult as I first thought it might be. Good job I've got a paddock stand and a lift and so on that made life a bit easier. You also might notice that I didn't change the rusty nuts which hold on the front spindle and that's because those nuts are not available unless you buy the entire spindle and that's about 70 pounds so i didn't bother but i will have to address that problem at some point i may even try to get them made in stainless steel we'll see we'll see and with it back in its wheels i can now move on and do a lot more work so i can now fit the rear brake i can get um the front brake sorted out get get some uh a hell brake line for that measured up get it ordered I've still got some parts on order, that said I've got uh, new indicators, clutch cable, throttle cable, that kind of things on order at the moment. So next then I'm going to fit the carburetors, I've cleaned them out and they can go back on the, uh, on the bike. The good news is that the next two or three days the forecast is sunshine so I can carry on and uh, work out here on the drive and hopefully get the wiring harness back on the bike. Maybe even get the damn thing lit up, who knows. Yeah but overall I'm pretty happy. So, also by the way, I've got uh, some new, new shocks on the way. I've ordered some new shocks for the bike. And I'm also thinking of buying a new exhaust pipe for the bike because the Kirker system that came with the bike, I was quite surprised because the downpipes are welded to the collector box. And that makes life very difficult because if you want to get rid of the rust in that area, you know, refinish it, repaint it, whatever, some high, high tech coating on there, which is what I wanted to do. It's almost impossible because you can't access the pipes in that area because they're welded to the uh, collector box. Bit of a pain that. Right, so that's it for today's work. It's now six o'clock, time I went in for a cup of tea. And at last I can now push the bike back in the garage on its own wheels, which is a huge relief. So we'll continue the work tomorrow when the forecast is sunshine all day. And hopefully by the end of this uh, video, we'll have the electrics back on the bike, the carbs back on the bike, and who knows what else, new shocks and maybe even a new exhaust pipe. And now here we are, it's the next day and it's a beautiful sunny day, can't argue with that. I just fitted the rear brake and the torque arm. That was pretty simple, but my next job isn't so simple. And that next job is fitting the carbs to the engine using my new carb rubbers. And it's been a real fight, they do not want to go on. It's so tight, I just cannot press these carbs on the new rubbers. I've even checked the numbers, they're all 046, which is the correct code for my bike, but my god, they're really fighting me all the way. So therefore, I've got a plan. I've got here my old hairdryer, my old hairdryer. So we'll turn it on. And we'll leave it on for quite a while, maybe 10 minutes or so, and that should warm up the car rubbers one by one and hopefully make them a bit softer so I can get the damn carbs on these new carb rubbers. So come back in 10 minutes and we'll see if my idea has worked. Right, let's try again. Actually pushing so hard, the bike's moving, never mind. I should put some grease on the inside of the rubbers, but it's not helping. Not helping at all. Oh, come on. It does not want to go. I'm worried about the bike moving actually. Nope. She might try and hit it maybe. Tap it with a hammer, but God knows how you're going to access 
the back of the cards. Oh, no, I just don't want the strength to push it in. Oh my god, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Oh, I've got to go in at the same time. No, I think I'll have to have a bit of a rethink. I just don't have the strength to push these damn things in. And they are the correct, they are the correct oh, rubbers, so I have no idea why it doesn't work. I know they're all tight, but my God, that is so tight. Right, have a bit of a rethink. Sit down, cup of tea, and maybe I'll leave the hairdryer on these things a bit longer. Or maybe spin the bike round, get it in the sunshine, and warm these up a little bit more. Oh well. I first, if I first you don't succeed, try and try again. And so at last I've got the carbs on the bike. And my god, what a struggle. And the way I did it was I protected the frame here with some foam and then got this old gardening stave, whatever it is, and I used it as a lever. So I put it on the frame like that and then levered the carbs one way than the other to get the damn carbs in those new manifolds and it worked so good job I didn't throw that away it was quite gentle I didn't sort of press on it a lot because you know you're not a break break a carb or anything like that but yeah it worked quite well with that done let's see what else we can do today and so my next job is to work out how long a new brake line needs to be to work with the Ducati 600 SS master cylinder and of course the four pot Brembo so here I've got all my braid lines that I've never used or taken off bikes and so on turns out that these two here silver ones this is a good ridge they're too short that can go this one here is far too long that one's far too short but this one here that I'm just trying out now is almost right it's almost right so I'm just giving it a little try out and it looks to be about I don't know 10 millimeters too short to work although that said of course it would be too too uh, stretched anyway so I reckon if I bend this the way it needs to be I think this needs to be about 30 or 40 millimeters longer than this one and also the banjo bolts need to be angled these are all straight and I think what I need is maybe a 30 degree bend on this one and the same on this one which will help the flow of the brake line to fit just right so very handy to keep these old ones not that they're old they're actually brand new I just didn't use them on a project or I changed them for some reason god knows why I can't remember now so let's get that off here I can then measure it at about 40 millimeters or so I will double check and then um, yeah get it ordered from hell it takes about a week to arrive costs about 35 pounds delivered and I'll specify the angle of the banjo bolts as well which you can do so that's fine that's great so that's coming very handy right so with that done then I'll write that down and then I'll order it later on today well, that said, this weekend's a bank holiday, so I don't think anything's going to happen for the next few days. Right, so with that done then, let's see what else we can do today. And so the next big task for me for the bike is to refit the wiring harness, which I've now repaired and changed slightly. So I'll do that tomorrow because I suspect it's going to take me all day to get that damn thing working. And it's now getting a bit late. But hopefully the weather will still be nice tomorrow and we can crack on and get that job finished. So join me then tomorrow when we'll attempt to fit all the wiring. And now here we are, it's the next day. And today I want to try and fit the wiring loom back on the bike. But before then, a parcel just turned up, which is down here. And in here are my new rear shocks. So let's get this box open and get these shocks on the bike. And here they are. As you can see, they're YSS, Ecoline shocks, gas filled. Now, these are not the base model of YSS shocks. These are sort of one up from the base. So these were 190 pounds. The other shocks I considered were those made by Hagon and their 2810 shocks, which also have a three-way adjustable damping as well. But I felt that the extra cost, which is £100, to buy the Hagon 2810s wasn't really worth it for my particular bike. And I've had YSS shocks before. They're really well made, good quality and, yeah, very good value. So let's get these on the bike. Problem is, 
this hole is far too big. The standard size bolt. So that's no good. Let's see what we've got in the box. Maybe we've got some spaces. Right, so in the box I've got sticker, got some instructions, I've got these shims here, which have no use to me, and I've got little tools to adjust the preload, and that's about it. So there's no spaces to make sure this shock fits my bike, which is a bit unfortunate because these were bought to fit my bike, so I'm not sure what's going on there, not sure at all. And so I went looking in my box of spaces and I found these spaces here that have been used on other shocks in the past. Uh, these are far too big, they can go back in the box. These aren't bad, these actually will work with the standard Kawasaki mounts. I mean these are the correct size for this bolt, but they're still too small to fit in, in here, or rather to fit correctly. So, what to do, what to do well? Looking at this, I think maybe if I can press out the old rubber mount here in the base of the old original shocks and then press out the steel insert, maybe that will fit inside there. If it does, that will solve my problem at the bottom, but not at the top. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So let me go and see if I can press it out of here, stick it in the vise and uh, hopefully press that out and it will fit in here and then fit on the bike. And so I've now put the shock in the vise this spacer here at the back, it's got a hole in it, which is bigger than the steel spacer inside the rubber of the lower shock mount. Whereas this one here, that's about the same size as that steel insert. So hopefully as, as I clamp the vise closed, it should push it out. Well, in theory, in theory, let's have a go. Well, something's happening. Not tell what yet. It's taking a lot of force, that's for sure. All right. Right. Let's see how that's gone. Take everything off. Has that worked? Let's have a look. There's my little spacer. There's a shock. Well, no, it's actually pushed. Pushed this. Uh, the whole rubber insert out of the shock. That's okay, that's okay. You can see here, this has got a hole in it. So why didn't that work? Let's have a look. Well, let's make a start, I suppose. Right, so now I've got to get that steel insert out of this rubber bung. So, not sure how, perhaps heat it up. I can always cut it off, but uh, I think I should be able to press it out with my appropriate spacers in the vise, so come back when I finish that. Right, so with the rubber bung out of the shock, that inner steel spacer is still in there, so I've just rearranged things and hopefully we can now push out that steel insert. Let's see if this works, or not as the case may be. Well, it's all sort of collapsing, isn't it? Let's have a look. Oh, it goes about that far. What happened there? Let's have a look. Oh, it's getting a bit distorted. Yeah, I think the rubber's just collapsing. Alright, well that didn't work because the rubber's just distorting. So I think what I'll do now is I'll just cut it off. It should come off, I think, with just a sharp blade. Hopefully, I don't even know if this insert's going to work with my new shocks, but we'll see. Let's have a look. Right, so there's a cleaned up spacer. Let's see if that will now fit my new YSS shocks. Right, so here is the YSS shock and here is the original spacer. And it doesn't fit. It almost fits, but not quite. The outer part of this spacer is 15 millimeters. And the inner part of this one is 14 millimeters. So unless I take off a mill off this, that won't work. It's also 16 mil outers altogether, so I can't just push out this steel insert and put this one in because it won't work. So what to do, what to do? Well, I need to make four new spacers which are 14 mil outer diameter and 10, 10.1, 10 10.2 inner so they fit the frame. To do that, I've got to go and see my mate Jeff. In the meantime, I'll just fit them as is just to keep the bike on its wheels. 
And so now I've just fitted the shocks for the time being so I can roll the bike around. Some good news though is that the top mounts fit fine. It's a problem here with the bottom mounts because the space is not correct. So I've just got to make two spaces here at the bottom so that uh, these bottom mounts fit just right. And to do that, I'll go and see my mate Jeff in a few days time and get to machine up some suitable spaces and then hopefully that's it for the shocks oh by the way I've not yet got the correct brand new chrome nuts here for the top but they are of course on order just not arrived yet and another part that I have today is this a pair of rear indicators for the bike what's interesting is it's only got one wire coming out of it rather than two and that's a slight problem because this wire is obviously the live, the feed, and normally on these, the earth is through the stem, through the frame, and back to earth. But, but on my bike, like a lot of Kawasaki's, the rear indicators are completely rubber mounted. So they can't be earthed. You know, they, they, there's no earth between the stem and the frame. To get round that, you have a spacer that lives behind here, which has a, a wire, an earth wire, uh, soldered to it which you can buy actually you can buy them but i'll just make my own so uh, that's not really a problem so let's get these these bolts on here like that i've actually changed these for stainless steel when i uh, get the right right size hex bolt which i don't have right now and that's another job completed on the bike so there we go i've got two of course one for this side one for that side and so now I've got the rear indicators on the bike and the new YSS shocks. It's a pity they don't fit first time, but I'm sure it won't take long to machine up a couple of spaces to make sure that lower shock mount is correct. So what's next then? Well, I've still got quite a lot of things on order, including um, a front mud guard, some small parts like a clutch cable, throttle cable, that sort of thing, and some pod filters for the carbs. Now, I would like to fit the standard airbox, but it seems better days, it's really scratched up. And the problem is, the front part of the airbox is visible here in front of the side panel. It's very visible, and I don't know any way of removing the scratches and marks that are in that plastic airbox. And you can't buy them new, and even secondhand, they'll really cost a fortune. So, I'm going to go with pod filters for the time being, and we'll see how I get on with those. Now the ones I've bought are very cheap, very cheap and cheerful, no doubt k and knockoffs from China. And standard, or the correct k ns or even those from APE, which I think actually are made by k and they're about 70 or 80 pounds for four. But the ones I'm buying from eBay, the cheap ones, are only 14 pounds for four, and so you can see how, how cheap they are. But I'll go with them for the time being as sort of a placeholder, and we'll see how I get on. So yeah, that's uh, something that's going to happen next. One thing actually that stands out on the bike at the moment that I'm not happy about is the quality of the chrome on the few parts that I haven't touched yet, such as the, uh, the kickstand, the rear brake pedal, the lever at the back here. They're all chromed and a bit rusty. So what I will do is I will get them re-chromed at some point, but not right now, because chroming takes oh, months and months and months. Every time I go into a chromers, it always takes months. So I don't want to wait months. Therefore, that job will have to wait until the winter when the bike won't be ridden. Right, so what's next then? Well, next, the dreaded electrics. But as often is the case, I'm running out of time today. So the wiring harness and the wiring of the bike and maybe even getting it started, we'll have to wait until the next episode. But I'm pretty happy with progress so far. Thank God the weather's been good. Last few days, it means I can get a lot done. So that's it then. So join me in a week or two when hopefully all the parts have got an order, will have arrived, and maybe, just maybe, we can get this bike started up for the first time. So until then, thanks for watching and cheers.